build with resilience in mind, understanding of the impact climate change is having on vulnerable countries like St. Lucia was a sentiment of UK Minister and COP26 champion for the UK, Honourable Anne-Marie Trevlan, who visited the island to get a first-hand view of some of the climate adaptation projects in St. Lucia funded by the UK government. Glenn Simon reports. Welcome to Thank you very much. Indeed. Minister of State for Business, Energy and Clean Growth from the United Kingdom, Anne Marie Trevelyan, visited St. Lucia to witness firsthand some of the adaptation projects funded by the UK government. One of the key projects she visited was the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road Rehabilitation Project. So I'm really looking forward to seeing for myself exactly where this road will go and to understand uh, just how important it's going to be uh, for so many of St Lucia's residents, but also, of course, for tourists as they come to visit your wonderful island. Minister Trevelyan is also the Adaptation and Resilience Champion for COP26, hosted in the UK this year. She noted that vulnerable countries like St Lucia face challenges due to big climatic changes, such as flooding, which washes away roads, she stressed the importance of building new structures with resilience in mind, understanding the impacts of climate change. We are, we are doing the same in the UK. We are building roads that have to be more resilient to our weather shocks. Uh, and uh, that's part of uh, what we want to be doing as we make sure that the uh, funds that we spend to help uh, infrastructure uh, for those countries that need it too is doing exactly the same thing so that St Lucian citizens have uh, the opportunity to, to benefit from solid infrastructure, which means that the economic growth can continue uh, and we can see St Lucia go from strength to strength. The minister and her team received an overview of the Millennium Highway project, which outlined areas such as project scope, requirements, funding, risks and project timeline. Permanent Secretary and Minister of Infrastructure Ivor Daniel, who accompanied the minister on the tour, said this is a project that all St. Lucians should be excited about due to the road safety, sustainability and resilience considerations featured in the design of the project. This project, the design wasn't, I could say, not the typical design. It's one where we, it, in there was the issue of the climate vulnerability assessment that had to be conducted prior to, to the, and that had to inform the design that the, the consultant had to put together. The consultant also had to take into consideration the outcome of an IRAP study, which is a road safety study. And there are also other issues of gender um, related matters that have to be taken on board. We need to have taken on board the matters with the, person, the, the, the project affected persons. We need to ensure that those vendors that will be displaced that there is a new location for them or there is some manner in which that would satisfy them that they can continue to, to survive in, in this country. He said the overall project has been divided into three lots. Lot 1 has been awarded and is due to commence in September 2021. Lots 2 and 3 are being rescoped for rebidding. Nicholas Johnny is the project coordinator for the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road Rehabilitation Project. This represents a major infrastructural project. Um, of existing roads, approximately 40.2 kilometers of road. It commences in Castries at the Bannon Roundabout and it ends in Soufre at the Soufre Bridge though. 6.1 kilometers from Castries to cul -de -Sac. You have 11 kilometers from cul -de -Sac to Ancillary, inclusive of the reconstruction of the Ancillary Bridge, which will see the demolition of the existing bridge behind us and the reconstruction of a new bridge, two-lane bridge, and then you have the, the, the final segment, which will be from Ancillary all the way down to Sufra. Along the tour, we spoke to two individuals from Marigo and Ancillary respectively, who will be directly impacted by the project. They expressed their satisfaction with the level of consultation and arrangements made to facilitate them during and post project execution. It will be better for me in the long run because I'm not really safe where I am because I'm on the roadside, so I'm going to move further away from the road. We are parliament, but the project. The project is estimated at US $54 million, comprising UK SIF funding of 69%, a CDB loan of 15%, and 17% is funded by the government of St. Lucia. When completed, the project will improve the overall road network, improve infrastructural resilience and connectivity, 
which is projected to foster greater economic activity for St. Lucia. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting.